Welcome to Jimbo's Garage. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome back to Jimbo's Garage. Well, a local vendor in town had dropped off their rolling barbecue smoker trailer for a couple modifications. Let's go outside, let me show you what we're gonna be doing and get started on today's video. All right, so a couple things we're gonna be doing. One of them is adding a lid to this utility box right here and a locking assembly. Uh, they just wanted to have some way of locking it up. And also a spare tire mount. You can see this was held down with some tie straps and they wanted a better way to secure it. And then a couple of clamps on the door of the barbecue there and then a utensil rack holder on the utility rack. So those are the things that need to be done. I'm gonna start with the spare tire. And uh, these are just some pieces that uh, I had in my scrap bin right here. I'm going to try to utilize them. I don't really have a plan other than trying to make, make uh, something work with what I have right here. Uh, it's a, about a 7 inch square piece of quarter inch uh, stock. Uh, some 2 inch pipe and uh, about a 3 inch uh, piece of uh, stock. So you can see I held that piece to the very back and I've marked it and I'm just going to drill a hole and that's going to be a reference hole. I'll be able to put um, the bolt or it's, not, it's actually not a lug lug bolt, but it's the same thread. And uh, I mean, you can see I centered it up and then I've just marked uh, the other two holes. I am just going to be putting three studs on there. That's all I, I feel I really needed. It's just a spare tire holder. We don't need to put five of them on there. And I quickly drilled those holes out. Double check to be sure that uh, they're going to fit inside and everything fits good. And uh, with that said, I want to just clamp things down and clean, clean it up a little bit. All right, get everything placed where it needs to be. And uh, the first thing is to weld these bolts in place. Good idea to just tack them and double check to be sure everything is running nice and square. And then I can go ahead and, and weld these all the way around. All right, and then I'm just using my scale right here with the two inch tube and finding the center or as close as I can. And I'm just gonna scribe a little mark just to be sure I don't get off and a clamp to hold everything secure, uh, nice and tight while I tack it. I generally like to put three tacks, uh, you know, equal as you can around something like this. Kind of helps hold it in place and doesn't want to pull apart. Once I got started, I took off the clamp assembly here and just finished uh, welding that out. All right, flipped it upside down in the same process for the smaller uh, piece of flat plate. And this is the one that's gonna be actually welded to the trailer. Uh, and like I said, this is just stuff that I had left over and you know, some scrap that I had. I mean, there's all, ton of different ways you can do this but this is just what I came up with and I'm sure that uh, this is going to be just fine all right once I got everything done there it is the mount uh, is pretty much complete I just took a grinder over to the area where it's going to be located I kind of did the best I could at taking some paint off there and getting some bare metal so I can get a good positive ground and once I got it located where I needed it to be um, again I'm just kind of tacking it in place I actually put a level on here and to try to, uh, to try to get it as level to the trailer as it possibly can. Uh, and that's what you see me doing right there. And that was pretty close. Right away I started welding this out and of course this uh, diamond plate is real thin. So I burned a hole right through it and uh, you can just see me I'm just uh, bumping that to fill that in. And once I got it filled in and I just continued to weld it uh, all the way around. Yeah, it's not going to go anywhere. It is just holding a spare tire. Um, this trailer is stored indoors as well. So, uh, you know, some people might say you might want to put a lock on there. Well, I can leave, I'll leave that up to the owners of the trailer, but it is being stored uh, inside. Some paint on there. And then the tire uh, mounts on there nicely. And uh, the extended lug nuts right there. And I just cranked it down. 
All right, so the next thing is to uh, replace these clamps on either side of the door. Actually, on this side, there's just one clamp. There wasn't two. So that's one thing we're going to do is we're going to add another one to the other side. That clamp was kind of wore out and wasn't working properly. Uh, I happened to have a couple of one, uh, a couple of other ones that were very similar. And uh, that's what I'm putting on right here. Yeah, they were complaining that uh, with the one clamp, it kind of left a gap on the other side of the door and uh, that, you know, there were loud, smoke was uh, getting out. They were, they were hoping for a, a tighter seal and they were asking if I could just add a secondary clamp to the, uh, to the other side. All right, once I got everything welded on and adjusted and just cut the bolt off there and kind of cleaned up the edges so there wouldn't be a, a sharp edge and just repeated the same thing here on the other side. That seemed to do the job pretty good. It sealed that uh, lid nice and tight. All right, so now it's time for the door. Uh, and I just happen to have some diamond plate on the side of the shop over there. I end up using the plasma cutter to cut it to the right size. You can see there's a little bit of a, a deflection or a warp to it. So I've got some one inch square tube right here. and I'm gonna make a, a rectangular frame uh, that's just a little bit smaller than the opening on the inside and uh, this is going to serve two purposes. Uh, it's going to be able to keep uh, the lid nice and centered as well as straightening out that plate and keeping everything and getting it nice and flat. It's got a little bit of a bow to it. I've got it fastened down on my welding table with the table dogs there and clank uh, two of those down at a 90 degree angle and then put the other ones in there and then uh, went ahead and welded as much as I could where I had it all clamped down in place. So I got that done and flipped it over to the other side and went ahead and finished it out. And then uh, went ahead and just cleaned up all the edges all the way around. Yeah, I'm using a Mercer, uh, a trimmable flap disc right here. Uh, a lot of people ask me what I use. Uh, this is a ceramic trimmable flap disc. I've got them in a couple different grits. Uh, they got a lot of variety over there. I just happen to use, I uh, uh, like these a lot. You can see how that, uh, when I crank that down, it's kind of straightened that lid out, kept everything nice and flat. Well, that's what I'm doing. Just a couple of uh, one inch long beads here all the way around is all you're going to need. I didn't want to put too much into it. That it, uh, It's not going to go anywhere and it served its purpose. It kept everything nice and flat. All right, a couple of hinges, and these are just standard uh, regular um, gate hinges. And I'm not getting real fancy with this. This is kind of the rugged look, and this is kind of uh, what I'm looking for. And it's going to kind of fit what we got going on. And I've come in about three inches on either side, and uh, I think that, uh, you know, the spacing in terms of where you put the hinge is kind of your own discretion. That's kind of just uh, was a nice even balance. All right, with the hinges on, it's time for the lock assembly. Now, I'm really reaching here for some small pieces. I hang on to everything. You never know when you're going to need some small pieces, and this is one of those times. You know, I um, this is just a lock, and, and I actually was going to uh, just buy a lock assembly. Uh, from the hardware store and weld that on and I actually went and bought it and I just wasn't happy with the way it looked or, or How it was gonna work and so this is why I decided I'm just gonna make my own and so this is how it, This is what I come up with right here. I was pretty pleased with it. This is more uh, I want to say um, Consolidated smaller uh, It just uh, was a better application for what we have right here. I'm just going to go ahead and fire right through both these at the same time. That way I can line up the holes will be lined up when I go ahead and weld everything on. I'll run a bolt through here to keep them nice and nice and uh, tight. And this is kind of the way it's going to work. I'm going to weld this on to the top right here.
and I'm going to put that in and there's the bolt that's going to hold them uh, nice and even together and then I'm going to weld this to the top of the door like I said there's all kinds of different ways of doing it this this just worked out uh, you know just the way I was I wanted it to it was kind of nice and concealed and nothing too big and I got a little u-bolt out of my bolt bin and cut it off and this is just going to act as a as a little handle a little pull handle All right, dropped it in place right there. And first thing I didn't want to do is I want to get these hinges welded on. So I'm operating off the, uh, the 2400, the HTP 2400. This is what I use when I get, uh, you know, uh, trailers and such in my driveway it's kind of a mobile rig I have on a stand and I'm able to roll that out and it's got a 15 foot gun lead on it so it's pretty handy for stuff like this all right and that works like that and you can see that uh, <clears throat> I'm just gonna go ahead and finish this up and then you can see how the lid comes down and closes and I uh, can get a lock in there all right, so the last thing is the uh, utensil holder, <laughs> utensil rack, whatever you want to call it. Now, they weren't real particular about this. They said, hey, we got a couple of knives. We've got some tongs and, uh, you know, a spatula and a few other items. We just would, uh, you know, if you could just do something that would just mount to the outside of that box, that would be great. So um, I, just, I came up with this. So I've got some of this uh, inch and a half uh, round tubing, and I cut five pieces off. And I double checked to be sure the tongs and everything fit inside here, and it did. And then I've got some rectangular tubing for the knife. They actually had a, um, uh, like a cleaver, and then another, uh, you know, carving knife type of, of thing. And that's what I'm going to, on the smaller pieces, that's what I'm going to use to hold it. The bigger piece is actually going to be the rack uh, itself. You can see that I'm welding some flat bar stock on both sides. I like to do that with with everything I do. I don't like to leave anything open. It just just makes for a better a better look and a better finish. And then uh, this uh, these are the knife holders for the cleaver and uh, the utility knife. And then this will be for the tongs and uh, spatula or whatever else they want to put in here. I'm just welding some washers on the very bottom. These washers uh, obviously uh, are going to help hold the uh, utensils in place and then provide drainage on the bottom. All right, once I got those done, took it over the Burr King and just kind of cleaned them up a little bit. And then finish grinding uh, down the ends of uh, of the knife holders here, and the and the actual uh, rack itself. Now, once I got this uh, ground down, um, I chose to drill a hole in the bottom as well, and I put it on the bottom. This is uh, going to provide for drainage. Uh, this is going to be the bottom. All right, here's the assembly. There's the uh, rack, and I wanted to put these on a little bit of an angle. Um, I chose, I think it was like a 15 degree angle. So the first thing was the uh, was the knife holder there, and. I got the cleaver on there first, and then I wanted to have a little bit of spacing between the other knife, so I put some half inch square stock on there, and then uh, that gives some uh, decent spacing for the knife, kind of keep them apart a little bit. All right, here's the big problem. So, always in a hurry, and if you see what's going on here, you know, I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to do everything, how it's going to work, what kind of space I'm, spacing I'm going to put in here, uh, trying to find stuff for that, decided on some one-inch square tube, and thought I had everything right, but I don't know if you can notice, 
but the tube is actually welded upside down. I've got the bottom on the top and I went ahead and welded it completely on both sides before I realized right there what I did. So I thought about this for a while and uh, actually I thought I'd turn the camera off but I left it rolling so I tried to figure out what I was going to do to fix it. First I thought I was going to, I only cut the washer off and uh, just weld on the bottom and I decided that that's not going to really work. I'm not going to be able to get in there and do that. And then I decided, okay, I just got to try to cut this thing off and start over. All right, so what I was hoping to do is to be able to get in here and cut the two welds on this side clean, and then I'm hoping to be able to get some channel locks and twist this thing up and break it off. That's the plan. And that actually worked, but I did do a little bit of damage there. I got a, I kind of tore a hole in it, but no problem. I'm just going to get my uh, flap disc, clean that up, and then uh, fill that hole. Get everything all cleaned up and clean up this pipe. And then we're back in business just like nothing ever happened. And this time I'm going to get everything on the right side. All right, so a piece of angle iron, uh, the clamp down on the top up there, and this is welded in place and matching my 15 degree angle. Now I clamp everything down. Everything's now it's not going to move, and I'll be able to butt these pipes right up against each other, and they'll be even all the way across, along with the one inch spacer there. And I could have put six, I, I guess hindsight, I could have had three on one side, three on the other. When I say one side, I have to, I had to leave room for the lock assembly. And that's why I've got a little bit of spacing between uh, the first three and the second two. But I'd only cut uh, two pieces. And so I've got uh, two pieces on the other side. But that's going to work out pretty good. Okay, there it is. Oh, I'm just going to stick it right on the outside. Just wanted to have it very close to being flush to the top of the door right there. I think it was a clean look. And just a couple of uh, welds on the outside. And there it is. There's, does its job. Got the door on. Utensil holder. Spare tire mount. Got in on there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you on the next video. See you next time on Jimbo's Garage.